honey on the swamp, there's miles of swampland that some places man doesn't even go to or can't get to because after the hurricane, they, they knocked down so many trees and you know just made it very thick back there that they don't go hunting that deep. Well, the honey on swamp monster is a creature that my grandfather, Harlan Ford, first had an encounter with back in 1963. He was with a hunting buddy, Billy Mills, and they came upon this creature that was down on all fours in a clearing when they were on their way to a campsite. They'd been clearing out and they built a camp out way out in the swamp. And this thing was on all fours, like as if it was rutting in the, you know, doing something. And they were, Billy was like, what is that thing? And when it heard its voice, it stood up on two feet and turned around and faced them. And that's when he got a look at its face. And he, they said, he said he didn't know what it was going to do at that point because it was it scared him, you know, because it was pretty big. And, and he, told, he always said it was like menacing looking. And so he went to get the, the guns out of their backpack because they had their guns all zipped up because they were toting supplies at that time. And by the time they got their guns out, it had ran off. And so they kind of thought, well, we better go, you know, see what that was. And they went after it, and then they never saw it at that point again. They never thought to look up in the trees. They never heard it break water, but they didn't think to look up. And over the years, other eyewitnesses, you know, had stated that they saw it up in a tree, so it obviously could climb. But um, he just described it as this something he'd never seen before. He said it was close, it looked similar to like what a baboon would look like. But when it stood up and looked at him, it was, he said it was almost too human-like to, he wouldn't have wanted to shoot it unless he would have had to because it looked too human, but it wasn't human. And he just, the thing he remembered most about it was its big amber color eyes. He said they were set real far apart, really intense and looked straight at him. And, and the face was sort of smooth looking, not, didn't have hair on the, this part of the face, but it had long, dingy hair hanging all around his face that hung, he said, almost to the ground. It was just really long, had long arms. And when it ran off, it ran off on two feet. So, and he, it stood probably, he stood six four, so he said this thing was as tall or taller than he was, but it was kind of at a distance, so he really couldn't tell, but he did, he did say it had to be at least seven foot. This is a copy of the original Honey Island Swamp Monster track that my grandfather Harlan Ford poured out in Honey Island Swamp. His, he poured his in 1974. Um, and I made this copy with that one, but see, you can see the, the, the knuckles and the, the bone structure. And this would be where the claws went. And then I guess it would have like an arch here in the heel, but it has three toes, then this little fourth, what some people call dew claw, I guess. People that say, oh, I hunt that swamp all the time, I've never seen anything out there, but they really don't go that far in. They just stay, you know, because if they kill a deer or a hog, they got to drag that thing back to their boat, and they don't want to be miles in and have to drag a hog or a deer back to their boat. So they don't really go to some of the places that a, something like this could hide out. If it's out there, there's hollow cypress trees, there's, it's just, you know, miles and miles of swamp place, places that, you know, would be a perfect habitat for a honey island swamp monster. You know, this swamp connects with other swamps. There's places, if it, it, if it migrates, it could go to, from Florida all the way Texas to uh, Mississippi, you know, there's just ways that it could travel and get to, you know, places that sound very desolate. But um, I just think, I think if it, that whatever it is, it's probably been there. Like almost like my grandfather used to say, he thought it was like pre something prehistoric almost that was just undiscovered by science. Just like they discover other creatures after you know thinking they're extinct or you know or just discover them for the first time that they didn't know about you know there's just there's really no telling there might be other stuff out there that we don't know about um, there's a lot of people who think it's a hoax um, but 
I know what my, my talking to my grandfather, knowing how serious he was about what he had seen out there, and the other eyewitnesses that I come across, you could tell when somebody's, you know, making stuff up. Um, just in conversations with people who were eyewitnesses, and then me, my experiences out there, and uh, finding track. We did find tracks out there, you know. Nobody knew we were coming, you know, we just happened to find these, you know, tracks. And so, um, I just think it's it's something that, you know, if people, the skeptics, if they want to go spend the night out there <laughs> for the night and then tell me the next day what they think about it. But, I mean, but if you, they may never see nothing. There's some people's never going to see anything, you know. But then there are a few that have. There's been too many eyewitnesses, whether it's the Honey Island Swamp Monster or Bigfoot, in other areas of the uh, United States or the world. But you know, there's too many people to say it's a hoax when there's too many eyewitnesses who've had some type of experience with these things. I don't think it's something we have to be scared of and worried to the point where you can't go out here fishing or hunting. Just be careful. If you do confront it, don't make it angry. Because <laughs> one of the eyewitnesses said, you know, they had taken a, a girl camping out at a campsite way out there. And this, it started terrorizing them in the night and was like it was started raining really hard and then one of them hit hit the fist through the window and broke the window so he flew, said he flew open the door and it was raining and he said he, there was like five of them circling and he started shooting a shotgun out there to try to ward them off he said but by morning they that girl she says get me out of here she never went back to the swamp so i've heard stories like that you think but he he sounded like he was telling the truth um then there was the incident with my uncle where he took his wife camping and it started terrorizing him. He was on that show in search of Perry Ford. He, him and his wife Angie at the time went out there and it was circling them and they had to build a fire all the way around them and start beating on stuff to try to keep it at bay. But he said, she, she told me when she saw him started making a, a weapon with a stick and a knife because they didn't have a gun with them that uh, she got scared. She's like, because he was a big man. He was, you know, could handle a lot of things. But she said when he started doing that, she's like, I knew we were, could be in danger. Cause it was like, it, it was circling and like it didn't want him there. And then he was, had said that that's the noise it would make, would make the hair on your neck stand up.